Okay, so I have my patient here who is needing a nasal gastric tube. And the nasal gastric tube um, is ordered for a bowel obstruction. So the patient is going to have one that is going to be um, used for decompression of the stomach. And then that will mean that it will also be hooked to suction to help to um, remove any secretions out of the stomach. So I verify my patient's um, prescription or prescri by the prescribing provider that NG tube is indeed going to be inserted. I will also explain it to the patient, what I'm doing and why we're doing it, and um, also help talk through how the patient can assist with the procedure if able. So once I get into the patient's room, once again, I am introducing myself, doing hand hygiene, providing privacy, verifying my patient's identity um, with two identifiers and the um, EMR. So once I get into the room, I'm going to put the patient's head up to approximately 30 degrees and the bed at a working height. You would like the patient to be um, sitting up because it does facilitate easier passage of the NG tube um, into the nasal pharynx and down into the esophagus. So I have my patient's head of bed elevated. Um, you just wanna make sure they can tolerate that position obviously before you do that. The other assessment that I wanna make sure I perform before doing this procedure is number one, I'm making sure the patient doesn't have any facial trauma because if they have facial trauma or any fractures um, located in their cheeks or possibly their nose and you um, insert a nasogastric tube into the nose, it's possible that you could cause more complications and damage if um, that tube enters into the fracture and behind your nares and your hard palate is your, and your soft palate is your brain. So you wanna be aware of that. Also, um, making sure that the patient and you decide on a signal um, if you need, if they need you to stop or if something isn't right. So in the beginning, you can kind of have the patient and you decide that if, if the patient needs you to stop, um, maybe put their hand up. Um, if everything's okay, thumbs up. All right, so first of all, we, we determined why the patient needs this and we determined in our assessment that the patient doesn't have any contraindications to performing this. Also, when I checked the patient's ID um, identification, verified it, I also wanted to make sure you verify allergies. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and lower the side rail so that I have room to work. I'm gonna move the tray table closer to me and I'm gonna go ahead and wash my hands again. And I need to determine how far I want to introduce the nasal gastric tube. So this is a saline, saline pump gastric tube. You'll notice it has a blue pigtail on the end. Um, these are both used for um, decompression, hook it to suction. They can also be used for introducing and administering meds or whatever needed, even fluids. Um, and you can feed a patient with this. Um, it just shouldn't be for long term. So now on this tube, there are markings and there are also numbers associated with the markings. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure how, um, how far I should put this into the patient. So typically that's done by the exit point of the tube is put at the nares and then to the earlobe. And then, then from there, you guide it down to the xiphoid process and then go in between the umbilicus, umbilicus and the xiphoid process. And that is where you are going to be inserting your tube to that point. So you either wanna mark that or tape it or just remember the um, reading on the tube. So for this one, it would be around 54. Okay, so once I have that determined, I'm gonna go ahead and put a non-permeable non towel on my patient's chest just in case there are any secretions or anything get on there. I'm gonna go ahead and wash my hands. And I'm going to put on gloves. So now I'm ready to go ahead and um, insert my nasal gastric tube. 
and if it feels like it's stiff or you can't really um, round it, you can definitely either warm it with some warm water to help loosen that up. You don't want it really loose because it might be a little more difficult to put in, um, but perhaps just semi-loose. And then we're going to have some uh, water-soluble lubricant that we need to lubricate the end so it can pass easier. So I'm going to go ahead and put the lubricant in. Okay. Okay, and then again, I'm having my patient sit upright. I'm also examining the nares, you know, prior, to, that's one of my assessments that I'm gonna do prior to inserting the tube, is finding the more patent um, nares. So when I look, um, both look fairly patent, and I don't see any obstructions, and the patient doesn't have a history of any septal defects or obstructions, so I'm gonna choose to use this right nare here. Um, the patient at first, you can have them sitting like this with their head. And once I get past the nasal pharynx, you can have the patient chin tuck and flex their head forward because that'll help pass it past the nasal pharynx. And then once you get to the oral pharynx, you can certainly have the patient perhaps drink water and take sips, and that'll help facilitate it going down into the esophagus. Now, if you start to notice when you get past the nasal pharynx into the oropharynx that the tube starts to curl or coil within the, by the mouth or the throat, you can go ahead and rotate this as you're going down and that might help alleviate that. So again, you're steadily inserting, watching for any signs of respiratory distress such as coughing or not being able to breathe or maybe the patient's telling you to stop and then insert it to the point of where you measured so if I look, I'm exactly where I measured it at. So I'm done getting it in. And then again, you're assessing your patient, making sure that they're doing okay. Um, prior to your assessment, um, prior to your initial assessment, you also wanted to make sure you did a GI assessment, um, listening to bowel sounds and doing you know, your um, typical gastrointestinal assessment for your patient. So now I have the um, NG tube in, so I need to go ahead and first of all, uh, make sure that a chest x-ray is ordered because once I'm done and I secure it, we're going to have the patient get a chest x-ray to verify that it's in the correct place where we'd like it to be. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and use some skin prep here on the patient's nose. And then, um, like I said, I don't have a commercial um, securement device, so I'm just going to utilize tape for this purpose. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a little S shape here around the tube. Careful not to obstruct the nares too much with my tape here. And so once it's secure then, um, again, you're always assessing your patient's comfort. I'm going to remove this and then we'll have the patient go down to x-ray or if possible, the patient can get a portable chest x-ray to verify placement. So once the placement is verified, we wanna make sure that we are documenting in the chart the exact measurement, um, the external length of the NG tube because that should be used um, for every time the tube is being assessed to make sure it's not migrating or dislodging, okay? So that measurement should be done um, as, as per policy, but it makes sure that, that that tube is not moving. So we should document that measurement. And then also, um, in some facilities, you can check pH um, to determine if it is in the stomach or not. And um, there's just make sure you check your agency policy as far as what that is for making verifying um, that the tube is staying in place as it's being utilized. So now that this um, tube is being hooked to suction and it was verified by chest x-ray, we can um, go ahead and just talk a little bit about how we would hook this up to suction. So many times you, you have to have a connector. So this is a connector. I'll open it here. And we use that to connect to the suction tubing. 
This is kind of cone shaped. So we can place that at the exit point of the pump and then you can hook it to your suction tubing and you can set your suction as prescribed by the provider. Okay, So that would be hooked to suction and if perhaps you wanted to stop the suction and we needed to clamp this tube, you can use um, what we have like a pigtail clamp and we can put that on the end of this to clamp it. So once the procedure is done, everything's been verified, then we want to make sure that we provide patient comfort. And we can go ahead and raise our side rail, lower the bed, do our culture of safety. And if the patient hopefully can tolerate having the head of the bed elevated, we should continue to elevate it. Um, to prevent any aspiration of gastric secretions. And then also um, make sure that you document the procedure. Any assessments you did prior and post. Also make sure you document the external length and any other um, ways that you determine that it was correctly placed and how the patient tolerated the size of the tube is also needed to be documented. And then when done, just make sure that your patient is comfortable and um, you do hand hygiene and make sure the call light is accessible and the tray table is accessible.